I'm Lee Altier, horticulturist at Chico State University. This is our new aquaponic system. It's been in the works for about a year now, built by a team of engineering students from the campus. This was an old greenhouse, but it was unused for some time. We recovered it, put in a new heating and cooling system, and the engineering students got to work in installing pipes and tanks to make it a functional system for growing plants and fish. Let me introduce you to Carter Wynn. He's been managing this system and in the process he's learning and we've all been learning about how it functions and uh, how to make it workable. So Carter, yeah. what, what's gotten you interested in this system? So I first heard about this system when I was in a soil science class and um, immediately was just intrigued by it. And I went home, started doing all this research on it. And I already had a, a love for like raising fish and I was studying plant science. So it just, it just worked perfectly together. And then I heard about our little system out here. And I, I just asked uh, one of my professors, was like, hey, I'd like to take this on. I think I could make it work. I got plants in it within probably a month and they were growing and it was a learning process. But once I got it established, it's been growing plants ever since, so. So do you think we're right about expecting that it's uh, going to improve water use efficiency? Oh, for sure. I mean, what, well, that's, what, that's what gets me most excited about it is just the, how much water we're using. I mean, agriculture uses anywhere from 75 to 90% of a region's available fresh water. So if we could find better ways to do it, we could actually like save our water crisis that we're in. I think that farmers now are being faced with this decision. Like, are we gonna continue to do what we've been doing? or we're gonna find new ways to do it to where we aren't using so much water. It's apparent to me that this is a, a closed system. Yeah. We're talking about a closed loop, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yeah. Between the source of the nutrients and the acquisition and utilization of the nutrients by the plants. Yeah, so we're essentially just recycling the water. In our system, we use anywhere from five to 10% of what we would use in a field. Like out in the field, you have water leaching down and then you lose a lot of it to evaporation. And then a lot of it doesn't even reach the roots. It kind of just goes out into the, the rest of the soil. But in this, we keep it enclosed. So we're losing way less water to evaporation and leaching. And here in, in what we're doing, we're creating our own ecosystem with these pipes. And uh, we aren't using any soil and it uses way less space. Usually in like conventional, there'd be one plant right here, but we can just stack plants up in one little spot. Our arrays are nine feet long and five feet wide, and we're putting 340 plants on them. So it's, it's a mixture of vertical agriculture and aquaponics. Okay. The aquaponic system is a loop. Production of fish and plants is connected by circulating water. The fish are fed purchased organic food that provides them energy and nutrients. Wastewater effluent from the fish tanks contains nitrogen and other nutrients that is pumped to a biofilter. The biofilter comprises a membrane populated by bacteria that convert ammonium nitrogen in the water to nitrate nitrogen, a more suitable nutrient for the plants. The water continues from the biofilter to the plants. We have chosen plants such as lettuce, spinach, mustard, basil, and other species that can be harvested during a short six-week cycle. The plants extract the nutrients from the water and clean the water as it continues back to the fish tanks. All right, so these are our, our tanks right here. Um, this first one is our 750 gallon, and this is just filled with our small koi. We have nine different Japanese varieties in here. And in this one, we have our, our, our much bigger koi. Um, we have a couple koi in here that are over two feet. We have just 30 on this side. And this one's got around 700. So this is the source of all the fertilizer that gets to the plants, yep, correct? Exactly. Yep. From basically from the food that yeah. the fish get that they convert. So we're basically taking this fish food right here. We're feeding it to the fish. These fish are consuming this food, producing waste. 
So this is an automatic feeder here? Yeah, these are our automatic feeders. Um, I'm just Oops. still a little bit, uh -oh. but it's all right. They need some food. Um, basically, these things that have timer set on them, you can change the, the rate, the amount of food you're giving them, and then what time of the day they want to be fed, how many times a day you want to feed them. So like this one, we got it ramped up pretty high right now because there's so many fish in it. The water that's coming out of that thousand gallon is, is underground and it comes up right here, okay? And then as it gets pushed through our pump, and after it goes through our biofilter, it comes up into these and it goes through all of our arrays. And once it goes through the arrays, it comes back down to right here. And this goes back out into our return tank. Okay, so you're taking that water from the fish. Yeah. It's going through the biofilter mm -hmm. and then to the plants. Yep. And so the plants, by extracting those nutrients up through their roots, yeah. aren't they cleaning the water? Yeah, so basically the, as the, the, um, the nutrients are passing through these pipes, the plants are taking up everything and they even pick up little solids. Um, they clean out the water really good. Like if you look at our water, it's, it's pretty clear. And that's just because there's this huge filter system that's um, basically just a living, a giant living filter system. And how do you monitor that? Okay, so yeah, one of the main things we, we look for a lot is ammonia, just because ammonia is the most toxic towards the fish. This is where our pump's at. So this is coming directly out of the fish tank. So this is gonna show us what our water looks like coming directly out of the fish tanks. So you'll just stick it in there. And there's your water sample. You wanna test this so that you know, um, if your ammonia is too high, your fish, your fish will definitely end up dying. So um, this is where you wanna test the ammonia in this particular area, just to make sure that um, it's not, your levels aren't too high. It takes like 20 minutes to do that. If I actually do all the steps, then it would go in that and you'd look at the color. So now if we're gonna get a, a sample that comes after the biofilter, it's basically gonna come up right here. It's coming out. And I could take it right out of one of these pipes that's feeding to the, these plants. Before it gets to the plant. Yeah. So you want to look at your ammonia and your nitrate when you're measuring the hair. So a nitrate kit is pretty much the same. Just got to follow the, all the little directions on there. So this is testing the ability of the bacteria to convert ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. So this is the outflow pipe from the plants back to the fish tanks. So this is the third spot where Carter is extracting sample of, of water to see, in fact, how well the plants have cleaned up the, the nitrogen out of the water before it gets back to the fish. I'll be testing for nitrate and ammonia as well as pH on this. Just like you did for, at the other sites, correct? One of the critical aspects of this system, where you have the, the fish balancing the plants in terms of nutrient transformation and availability to the plants, you have to have adequate fish yeah. to provide nutrients for the plants, but you have to have adequate plants to extract the nutrients, particularly the nitrates that build up. I notice here at this point that we have some variation. There seems to be some plants that are greener, some a little bit yeah. yellower. Yep. It looks like maybe there's still some tweaking going yeah, on definitely. with the system. Well, I mean, this it's kind of ever-changing. Um, and what's, what's cool about it is your plants are basically like your signal to, to tell what you have wrong with your water. So that's what's kind of cool. It's, it's like a filter system that gives you a little signal showing you like, like certain deficiencies. Like for example, one of these. You look at that and you know exactly what you got. You need some more nitrogen. And then you look at these too, it's the same thing. So um, that's what's really cool about this system is that you can, you can tell what you're lacking just based off of your deficiencies in your plants.
My first trial I was growing, I, I was losing at least half of my plants. And what was happening was, if I can show in this pipe, basically the water is flowing right here, okay? And the roots were coming out of this and the root tips were getting dry, dried up in this airspace. So a lot of the plants just wouldn't even, it would never even reach the water down here and they would just end up dying. So after a while, I was trying to figure out how am I gonna keep this media mo uh, moist and keep our, the root tips moist. So then that's when I came up with our wick. And the wick is really simple. It's just a piece of rope or string. I've tried a bunch of different kinds, but the best seems to be this thicker pieces of rope. You tie a knot and just have it come out of the side right here. And all that does is when you put it in here, it hangs right into that water because we just have a little thin stream of water that comes down and through capillary action just sucks up the water into this uh, net pot and completely soaks the media. So as you can see in here in some smaller plants, the wick has like more purposes. So basically it holds more habitat for microorganisms. It's also used as like a guide. So the when the roots are first coming out, let me see if I can find a younger one. Um, when the roots are first coming out, they'll grab onto it. Here we go. They'll grab onto it and they'll use it as a guide down into the water. And they'll even go inside of it sometimes. And it gives the plant a head start compared to when I wasn't using the wicks. They were just, they would, most of them will just die, but this has really saved a lot of plants. I don't really lose any plants anymore to, to uh, water loss. So, Let's focus on harvesting for a moment. Mm -hmm. With this modular system, the whole, whole area doesn't get harvested at once, does no, it? No, no. So, so basically... Just one module per week? Yeah, and if you took all the plants out at once, you, you would essentially kill your whole filter system and it wouldn't be um, filtering at all. So like the best way to do it is when you remove plants, you replace it that day with a new plant. So what we would do is when you come through here and we harvest all this, we would have transplants ready to go that day. And once these are moved out, transplants go right back in. So there's never an empty hole. Okay. And that way, while these are regrowing, the rest of the, the hydroponic system is still fully functional. Yep, yep. We've been slowly working on just finding a new way to make this quicker. And we've been getting way more efficient with it, but I'm sure as time goes on, we're gonna find even, even better ways to do it. I think we can buy a cedar where we just yeah. walk along the row and just pop them in. Yeah, and that don't would even, be nice. Don't even handle them. Mm -hmm. We've seeded butter crunch lettuce. This'll be mature and ready for harvest within about 40 days. There's reports that say because of the availability of nutrients in an aquaponic system, with roots being easily able to access nutrients flowing through the system, that plants grow faster. We're still at the beginning of the system and uh, haven't taken those measurements yet. Yeah. So in the time you've worked here, Carter, What's most excited you? Well, I think what excites me the most is just the potential of aquaponics itself. When I, when I think about how you can really make these systems anywhere, something that I think would be so awesome is just having rooftop aquaponic systems because people could have real local food in their own town instead of like getting it shipped to them. They could literally grow like actual local food on rooftops. It's just space that's not being used and you might as well use it and like grow food with it. So that's something that's really awesome. Also other places like deserts, like just places where you could never even think of growing things. You could basically just create a little aquaponic system and grow essentially whatever you want. So I mean, this is scalable, isn't it? Yes, Either larger yes. or smaller. It can go from little tiny ones you can put in your own home, um, in your backyard, to even really big systems just producing thousands of plants. Um, there's even potential for it to be used in space. Uh, you're, you're basically creating your own ecosystem, so if you can keep it healthy, you can basically grow anywhere. So what does the future look like? 
We have challenges facing us like never before with climate change and diminishing resources. We are addressing the challenges of the 21st century with creative solutions that are rethinking ecological systems. The aquaponic system of circulating water between fish and plants provides benefits of high efficiencies for utilization of fresh water, nutrients, and space. In fact, we're growing three times the plant population per square foot of ground area as we could in a field. The circulating water reduces evaporative losses and it eliminates any chance of nutrient loss or environmental contamination. Our system at Chico State University will soon be enhanced by the addition of a soldier fly production unit. It will utilize food waste from the campus cafeteria to produce larvae that will be fed to the fish and replace the need for expensive purchased fish food. Aquaponics offers an exciting strategy exploring new solutions for sustainably producing highly nutritious food with minimal resource inputs.